Hello children, I hope you are fine there. Good morning. Uh, today I am before you with the poem A Tiger in the Zoo. A Tiger in the Zoo. Since we have completed our syllabus, let us revise. Okay. Now in the first chapter, I mean to say that you know in the first uh, lecture we will revise a tiger in the zoo this is a poem written by writer hmm, written by the poet huh, Leslie Norris hmm, I have told you who is that writer Leslie Leslie Norris okay <coughs> Leslie Norris is the poet. Now, the second part, sorry, the second idea which we will learn, what is the theme on which this whole poem is composed? What is the theme? Theme is, uh, theme means main idea. Okay? Theme means main idea. The hopelessness and helplessness of caged tiger. Caged means present tiger. Okay? Present tiger is shown here in the poem. What is the name of the poem? A tiger in the zoo. What is that? Hopelessness. Whose hopelessness is shown here? Tiger's hopelessness. And helplessness. Helpless. Helplessness of the tiger is which tiger? KZ tiger. KZ tiger means you know the tiger which is imprisoned in the, which is caged in the cage. Cage. She G cage okay so how the poet Leslie, uh, Leslie Norris has uh, shown let us see caged means we cage animals like dogs like um, parrots like tiger and sparrows and some other animals right birds as well as animals for our entertainment, for our uh, our pride, our entertainment. But poet mean to say, no, this is not good way. This is rather our cruel part that we are shown to whom we are shown to the and those animals as well as those uh, birds. Why? Because when we cage or when we imprison some birds and animals huh, we are cutting their freedom we are huh, cutting their freedom cut away their freedom huh, they like to roam they like to walk they like to go everywhere but when we when we um, catch them and put them inside the cage their freedom is cut down here hmm. their freedom is snatched here their freedom is curtailed here <coughs> curtailed means cut away shortened here means they are now bound to walk only inside the cage they like to no bird can fly freely huh? in the sky like that you know a bird can fly huh? No bird can fly inside the cage, as the bird can fly, where? In the sky, freely. So, in this poem, poet has talked huh, that this cruelty, this cruelty of human being is highlighted when they caged huh, animals. Now here, the helplessness of, helplessness of the tiger is highlighted he stalks in his vivid stripes he stalks in his vivid huh, stripes the few steps of his cage means you know the tiger walks inside the cage only with a few steps tiger neither can jump neither can walk neither can go anywhere at any length the length of a tiger that means you know that means when a tiger jumps it is about six to seven feet six to seven feet length covers but 
in total the length of tiger is very less one okay now what happens the pads of velvet quiet in his quiet rays quiet rays quiet rays r a g e rays rays means anger quiet here quiet q u i t quiet means sorry this quiet q u i e t this q u i e t quiet means uh peace peace or silence means here poet i mean to say that you know quiet rays quiet quiet rays quiet is peaceful and rays is angry angry one so by this word poet poet talks about poet talks about ha huh, one figure of a speech known as oxymoron 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 when two opposite word sit together two opposite word quiet is quite opposite with rays rays means uh, temperate one whereas quiet means peaceful okay now who remains quiet tiger remain quiet but inside inside his quietness inside his silence uh, what is there he is very temperate one he is very angry one but he keeps silence he keeps silence okay because he is helpless who is helpless tiger is helpless now he stalks stalks means stalks means move stalks s t a l k s stalks means movement uh, moves moves he moves he walks you can say that you know walk walks where inside the inside the cage uh, few steps why only tiger moves with a few steps because he is bound he doesn't have any freedom to jump and to run and to walk freely as he can do huh in the field or in the jungle okay now let us come to that you know the next stanza he should be lurking in the shadow he should be now the next stanza poet talks about that you know the condition huh, huh how tiger lives in the nature he should be lurking lurking means hiding l u r k i n g lurking lurking means hiding hiding okay sliding through the long grasses near the water hole huh, where plump deer passes plump plump p l u m p plump means huh, healthy healthy means the deer 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 like other animal also there huh who who is caught by whom tiger tiger attacks them hmm tiger attacks them and you know tiger tiger who does tiger attack tiger attacks the uh, plump deer deer hmm deer is another animal okay so here in the next stanza poet talks about that you know the tigers are free quite free to run here and there they can hide inside the long inside the long grasses huh? where tiger is uh, tiger walks tiger walks in the nature now tiger walks everywhere in the nature huh? tiger now can hide himself where inside the long grasses long grasses are there huh? and now in this way they they can jump over whom they can jump over that you know the plump deer huh when the deer comes to take water huh tiger comes away from the long grasses and attacks attacks and hmm. so this kind of freedom is no longer exist where where the tiger is there inside the cage huh the tiger so in the first stanza talks the helplessness of the tiger whereas in the second stanza poet has given that you know the total freedom tiger has tiger has tiger can go anywhere tiger can walk anywhere tiger can jump anywhere <coughs> okay tiger can hide himself inside the shadow etc like that now let us go to that you know the third stanza 
he should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge. Edge means E D G E. Edge means, huh? You can see that in the last part, last area, area, last area of jungle. Okay. So snarling means growling, tigers growling. <laughs> snorting like that you know growling like that tigers growls he should be growling around the houses that means you know just um, after the jungle area houses are there huh? villagers villages are there and tigers can go to the edge of that you know the jungle and roars roars huh? and snarls okay growl growl huh? as to remind the people that yes Tigers are there. Do not disturb them. Tigers are not disturbing the human being. So the human being must not disturb whom? Tigers. Can you imagine that, you know, generally tigers do not disturb. Tigers do not disturb human being. Huh? Or that, you know, the living habitat. So the tigers go and, you know, remind them by this kind of, you know, snorting sound, this kind of, you know, growling sound. Huh? Because tigers are also to some extent tigers are also human uh, you know humanistic why they are humanistic because tigers don't like to don't like to um, tigers don't like to disturb human being and other things only at a certain condition only when human being do not disturb them so this kind of understanding this kind of uh, thing tiger mean to say mean to say to the people huh now by and that's why that's only that they growl now next stanza but he is locked in a concrete shell now in this stanza poet talks about again again the helplessness of tiger concrete shell means you know shell shell refers to that you know a room made up of you know made up of you know bricks and bricks and cements uh, bricks and cements like that okay concrete shell uh, the shell the room which is built up with bricks and cement it may be that you know that case is also made with iron rod okay so poet says that you know a concrete shell is made and his strength behind the bars right and when tiger is put inside the cage uh, then Tiger can't show his total strength, total strength. Rather, poet says that, you know, all his strength is put behind the bar. Bar means, you know, uh, is now, he is made a handicapped one. Because he neither can jump, neither can walk, neither can run. Stalking the length of his cage. Stalking, walking. Tiger only walks. Huh? Tiger only walks where? Stalks. Only walk under that you know inside the cage suppose that you know this is the cage okay this is the cage area and now what happens only with that huh? only with that much area so how much area the tiger can move and tiger this way tiger just you know ignores the this way tiger ignores what the visitors because he doesn't have any interest. Tigers do not have any interest. Why? Over that, you know, the visitors. Human being, for their entertainment, has kept tiger inside the, you know, cage. And tigers do not huh, feel enjoy. Huh? Tigers do not feel enjoyment here. Because they are helpless. And, and their helplessness is enjoyed to people. Enjoyment is a cause of enjoyment to people. This is rather, this is rather inhuman. So, tiger feels hopelessness, tiger feel helplessness that uh, they are, they are lack of freedom. That means, you know, where there is no freedom to the tigers is the cause of entertainment. This is just, you know, foolish thing. Now, poet says that, you know, in the last stanza, poet describes the helplessness and hopelessness and what is that he hears the last voice at night 
the patrolling cars patrolling cars that means you know the car which creates a hooting sound that means in the police car okay whistling huh whistle invisiting the city the town okay and stares with his brilliant eyes stares means gaze gaze at the brilliant shining shining stars at night that means you know when everything becomes silent at night ha huh, there are only very less car like you know patrolling cars are roaming in the city running in the city ha huh, and the whole city turns turns what very much silent one ha huh, only the only the um, twinkling stars are there in the sky and it you know tigers looked at that one looked at that ha uh, shining stars there is no other ways there is no option left ha uh, so this way so this way poem uh, poem comes to an end ha uh, what is there poet talks about what poet talks about the hopelessness in the last stanza poet has given this idea that you know tiger is really hopeless hopeless because there is no other option rather than you know looking at the shining stars huh? and helpless helplessness because you know tiger can't show his strength tigers can't huh? here this tiger can't shows his strength inside the cage because his freedom freedom of running walking showing any action is curtailed cut away okay so this way poem comes to an end hmm one figure of speech we have got oxymoron huh when two opposite words sit together huh right here quiet means peaceful rage means angry one okay tiger remains quiet but he is angry he is angry inside but he remains quiet okay thank you one question again who is the poet lesley norris thank you god bless you all